जय राधा माधव कुंज जय राधा जान बाला बा Shodanandana Yamuna Kira Banaka Jaya Raja Mada Pinta Hare Krishna, 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 Hare
I'm going to read from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text number 2. Evam param para praptam, evam param para praptam, imam rajasayo vidu, sakalinaha mahata, yoganashta parantapa. Translation. The supreme science was thus received through the chain of the cyclic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, this succession was broken, and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. It is clearly stated that the Gita was especially meant for the saintly kings because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizens. Certainly Bhagavad Gita was never meant for the demonic persons who would dissipate its value for no one's benefit and would devise all types of interpretations according to personal whims. As soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the unscrupulous commentators, there arose the need to re-establish the disciplic succession. Five thousand years ago, it was, it was detected by the Lord Himself that the disciplic succession was broken and therefore he declared that the purpose of the Gita appeared to be lost. In the same way at the present moment also there are so many editions of the Gita, especially in English, and almost all of them are according to authorized are not according to authorized disciplic succession. There are innumerable interpretations rendered by different mundane scholars, but almost all of them do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, although they make a good business on the words of Sri Krishna. This spirit is demoniac because demons do not believe in God 
but simply enjoy the property of the Supreme. Since there is a great need of an addition in English as it is received by the parampara, the cyclic succession, an attempt has been made herewith to fulfill the great want. Bhagavad Gita, accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity, but if, if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculation, it is simply a waste of time. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Vancha Kaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namonam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasa de Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 So from this verse we can understand how the disciplic succession was created by Lord Krishna. It's established by Lord Krishna that he passed on the knowledge to as described in the fourth chapter, he gave the knowledge to the sun god Vivishwan, then Vivishwan to Manu, Manu to Ikshvaku. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost. And therefore, there was a need to re-establish the disciplic succession. And Lord Krishna came again. Well, this is one of the purposes of his appearance in this world to re-establish the disciplic succession. So the parampara, the disciplic succession is very important. Srila Prabhupada gives the example, just like when you have a valuable fruit growing. Haribo. Right. You go sit at the back. <laughs> so when you have a valuable fruit growing on the mango tree, you will handle it very carefully. You don't just throw it down. If you're collecting oranges, then it's not so bad. You can drop them from a high height. They won't get bruised so much. But Mangoes are delicate fruits. We have to be careful with them, handle them very gently. So similarly, the knowledge of disciplic succession has to be handled carefully. Hare Krishna, Indra Yapadam, Kanda Vadhyayam, Indra Yapadam, Indra Guru Parampraya Vadhyayam, Indra Yapadam, Indra Yapadam, Indra Yapadam, Indra Yapadam, Indra Yapadam, Indra yeah. So this knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita is like a valuable fruit. It has to be handled carefully, it's passed down through the disciplic succession. So the Krishna consciousness movement is connected to the disciplic succession. We're part, we're coming in the line from Lord Brahma. There are four channels of disciplic succession. We have one from our own one from Brahma, but there's also one from Lord Shiva, there's one from the four Kumaras, and there's one from Lakshmi. 
இந்த சம்பிரதாயம் வந்து நான்கு சேனலாக வருகிறது நான்கு வழியாக ஒன்று பிரம்மாவிலிருந்து வருகிறது மகாலட்சுமிலிருந்து வருகிறது சிவனிலிருந்து வருகிறது இந்த Now Lord Krishna was speaking about a line coming from the sun god, but that one is no longer present today. Today we have the four sampradayas, there's also the Mayavadi line, the Shankaracharya, he also has a disciplic session. They have a parampara. But of course, Shankaracharya is not teaching the same kind of philosophy as taught by the four Vaishnava sampradayas. Each of the four Vaishnava Sampradayas established that there is one Supreme Lord and the living entities are his servants. So this uh, purpose has to be established very clearly from the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. And Srila Prabhupada's comments, Srila Prabhupada's purports help us to understand this point very clearly. In the beginning of our Krishna consciousness movement, we did not have the published edition of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. So sometimes we would read the other Bhagavad Gitas and they would read the, the verses from their book. They would read out the slokas as translated by Mayavadis. And then later on Prabhupada's translations became available and devotees saw that actually that there's not much difference between the Mayavadi translation of the verse and the devotee and Prabhupada's own translation of the verse. But Prabhupada pointed out, he said, yes, he said, you have to read the purport. The difference is in the commentary, in the purport of each sloka. Means you have to hear the Bhagavad Gita, you have to hear these scriptures through the parampara. We cannot just simply hear from anyone. So it's very important that we should be connected in the line of the cyclic succession. So the ceremony of Vyasa Puja is not done to just glorify one person but is to glorify the whole parampara. We, we are indebted to all the acharyas in the line of the cyclic succession. We depend so much on their teachings and on their example. Srila Prabhupada's books are compiled with so many comments by the different acharyas. And this is the system of understanding spiritual knowledge. Just like if, if you go through the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
which Srila Prabhupada has also written for us in the form of the Krishna book, then there's a very important chapter which comes, chapter number 87 in the Krishna book or in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's also chapter 87. Eight, so this chapter is the prayers by the personified Vedas, the Shruti Charas. So these prayers were offered by the personified Vedas to Lord Garbhodaka Shai Vishnu. And these prayers, if you go through the chapter, it's a very long chapter. It's the longest of all the chapters in the Krishna book. And it's, it presents a whole Krishna conscious philosophy. You study that one chapter, you learn all the Krishna conscious philosophy. And it's described how the Shruti Charas, the personified Vedas, offered prayers to Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And then these prayers were heard by Sanandan Kumar, one of the four Kumars. Sanandan. And Sanandan Kumar with his brothers, the four Kumaras together, they all live on Tapaloka, which is one of the planets way up at the top of the universe, just a little below Brahmaloka. So Tananda and Kumar and the four Kumaras, they were discussing the teachings of the Shruti Charas. They were discussing everything which was said by the personified Vedas to Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And this was heard by Narada Muni. And Narada Muni then went to Badarik Ashram on earth. He came to earth and he went to Badarik Ashram and he met with Narayana Rishi. Nara and Narayan Rishis, the incarnations of the Lord, they reside in Badarik Ashram and Narada Muni went there and he told them everything he'd heard from the Kumaras. And so Nara Narayan Rishi, he, they, were in, they received that knowledge, uh, they communicated that knowledge to others also there in Badarik Ashram. And this was all heard by Sukadeva Goswami, he heard it from his father Vyasadeva, who was a disciple of Narada Muni. And so you can see how the disciplic succession works, how knowledge is passed on from the, the sages, one sage to another. And just like in Srimad Bhagavatam in third canto, we read about Maitreya instructing Vidura. 
And Maitreya, he is a friend of Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva is the son of Parasara Muni. And Parasara Muni was the guru of Maitreya. So because they, they were both connected with Parasara Muni, Vyasadeva and Maitreya were friends. And Vidura, he wants to be enlightened. He went to Uddhava first of all. He went with Uddhava. But Uddhava told him, No, you go to Maitreya. Maitreya? Uddhava, Uddhava and Maitreya had both been present with the Lord just before Lord Krishna departed from the world. Lord Krishna was instructing Uddhava and Maitreya was there. He heard everything. So Vidura wanted to know, what did the Lord say? What was the Lord's instructions? And he was asking Uddhava, and Uddhava said, no, you should go to Maitreya, he will tell you. He said, you go to my... But my uh, Vidura said, but it's the same knowledge. He said, you heard and he heard, why can't you just tell me why I have to go to him? But Uddhava said, no, Maitreya is senior. You should go to him. I don't want to commit any offense against a senior devotee. And he said, and it's not far away. <laughs> Uddhava and Maitre, Uddhava met Vidura in Vrindavan. He said, Maitre is only up in Hardwar, you can go to Hardwar, you can meet him. And there was no tree, there was no bus, there was no how to walk. But you should go there. <laughs> so this is the etiquette. The Vaishnavas, they, they strictly follow the etiquette. They follow every through the parampara. So coming into ISKCON, we are connecting to the parampara. Taking initiation in ISKCON is not connecting you just to a guru, but is connecting you to a society. And by being connected to the ISKCON society, then you, you connect it to all the parampara. And so, it's very important to have that connection to the parampara. When Lord Chaitanya was traveling, he came to Vrindavan and he came to this wonderful temple just in the beginning of 
his entrance into Vrindavan and he was chanting the holy name and dancing in ecstasy. And so when he was chanting Lord Chaitanya, he was he chanted on his own and danced on his own. Nobody, no, he wasn't with a group of people. He was just traveling with one servant and the servant was taking care of their belongings. But Lord Chaitanya got in ecstatic coming to the temple and seeing the deity in Vrindavan and he began to chant and dance in ecstasy. But when he was dancing and chanting, this elderly Brahmana also began to chant and dance with him. Now usually, you know, if you go on Sankirtan, you know, people may look at you. <laughs> but very rare somebody will come and join with you and dance. It's very unlikely. People may look and they may even move their heads, they may like the chanting. But very rarely somebody will come forward and take part in the kirtan by chanting. But this elderly Brahmana was dancing with Lord Chaitanya and he was also ecstatic. So after some time, Lord Chaitanya stop dancing and chanting and then he took that brahmana to the side and he questioned him. He asked that brahmana, who are you? And the brahmana said, I am a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So the Brahmana revealed his identity that is it, I'm initiated by Madhavendra Puri. And when Lord Chaitanya heard that this Brahmana was initiated by Madhavendra Puri, Lord Chaitanya bowed down to him, offered obeisances to him. And the Brahmana was embarrassed and uncomfortable. He said, come on, stop it, don't bow down to me. I, I'm just a householder and you're a sannyasi. Why are you bowing to me? But Lord Chaitanya said, you are a god-brother of my spiritual master. Mm -hmm. Because Lord Chaitanya was initiated by Ishwara Puri and Ishwara Puri was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So Lord Chaitanya recognized this Brahmana because he had been initiated in the parampara, in the same line of parampara as he was. And that's why they were able to dance in ecstasy together. So you see, this is the power of the parampara. That if you're connected, initiated in the bona fide disciplic succession, then you can feel the ecstasy of the holy name. 
It's proven. The proof is there by how the devotee chants the holy name. So we encourage all of you to chant the holy name in ecstasy. De develop your Krishna prayer. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki. Gurudev ki. Srila Maharaj ki. Hare Krishna. <laughs> if you chant Hare Krishna, no question. <laughs> Very late. Hare Krishna. Okay, no question. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.
ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಾಗಿ ಮಾರಿ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಾಗಿ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಯತ್ನ ಆಗಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಪೂಜೆ ಆಗಿ ಅಮರ್ ಗುರುಟೆ ಆಗಿ ಗೋ ಪ್ರಮನಂದೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ So on behalf of Srila Guru Maharaj, um, uh, Nagin Prabhu, Gop Kumar Prabhu and the congregation of uh, Krishna Balaram Mandir, um, just a few short announcements. So we have an amazing opportunity tomorrow to glorify Srila Prabhupada and the Guru Parampara. So please be assembled here at 5.30 in the morning for Mangal Arati Ki. Right, so 5.30 in the morning Mangal Arati starts. And then 7 o'clock in the morning is Deity Greeting and Guru Puja. And following that, we will have Go Puja. Just next to the temple, there's a small plot of land, also owned by the temple. It's going to be there. And uh, after that, we will reconvene for Bhagavatam in the, in the temple hall. And uh, Bhagavatam, after Bhagavatam will be Prasadam. Yeah, Haribol. <laughs> Prasadam. And uh, at about 9.15 is when the Vyasa Puja proceedings will commence, right? And Guru Maharaj will come in at about 9.30. So all of us need to be seated before that. And the uh, program will continue until about 1.30 to 2 p.m. And we'll have a Mahaprasadam feast after that. Yeah. And it doesn't end there. 5.30 in the evening is where we will reconvene again and take a few buses, one or two buses may be there, to go to Malacca town. Right? It's going to be a big surprise. We are going to go to a place where we have never been before. Right? The Malacca Chetty village. Right? And we are going to be having Harinam Sankirtan there. Right? So once again, an amazing opportunity to glorify Srila Prabhupada and the Guru Parampara. Let's reconvene here tomorrow at 5.30 in the morning. And Prasadam is waiting downstairs for all of you. Hare Krishna. One more announcement. Hare Krishna, thank you. Uh, I think we have a good start today at the Ariwas Puja. So the Mamatu must be kept up until the end of the Sunday. So tomorrow, we will a counter for the registration. Please participate, devotees, everyone, register yourself. Then we can record for next year onwards. We can use that record to communicate any other uh, activities. And the other one is a service. In the service, uh, not spot, we got a service list. Whoever wants to participate in the service, like uh, helping on cooking, serving, or, or Harinam, or Kirtan, and all this, you just note down your name, then we can continue uh, tomorrow. Because it's easy, all of us can be the room to be this actually. Okay, Hare Krishna, the Prasad is waiting, so all of us. Hare Krishna. Down, down for the Prasad. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna,